Good morning, Andrea. It's great to have you here. Um, I want to uh, ask you a few questions, nothing, nothing too scary, I hope, anyway. Um, firstly, I'd like to get a gauge on how the year to date has been for the Nuance Group, and you've, it's been a year of exciting changes for you, I know that much, but how would you describe the, the trading performance for the group? Well, tra trading performance is certainly satisfactory so far. Mm -hmm. As you know, we um, discounted at the beginning of the year the loss of uh, the core categories in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, but now we are already on a growth territory again uh, with a number of different uh, markets that are performing quite nicely. Generally speaking, uh, we're not seeing the growth we used to see in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, much of this growth still depends on high investment we've been doing over the last 12, 18 months. Mm -hmm. So we do see a slowdown uh, in market performance, particularly when it comes to uh, European consumers. Even in Asia, uh, growth is good, but it's not as strong as it used to be. Mm -hmm. and did you expect that to a certain extent? Were you prepared for slowdown in some areas and better performance in other areas? Yes, well, that's the logic of, of portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we, what we hope is, particularly for the European market, which still uh, is, is a relevant market in, in our industry, that confidence will come back in 2014 because it's been now f sort of three years that we are seeing a slowdown in growth and in many cases for certain passenger groups even a, a, a lower mm -hmm. uh, sales level. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. And let's talk more about the acquisition side of yeah. things. Uh, just how significant has the 80% Lenrianta acquisition been for you guys? Yeah, well the acquisition of Lenrianta is a um, we did it because of the tender we won in, in St. Petersburg and the partnership we did with uh, Lenyant initially has been a very important, uh, played a very important role in our capability to give the confidence to Purkovo Airport we could implement uh, the new dream uh, that they had very quickly. So it's a very important acquisition, more important I think has been the very tough tender process we went through and, and the success we had in being awarded that tender. Mm -hmm. And tell us about some of the new concepts that are involved in that. I mean, I know that we've talked previously about your niche fragrances concept, yes. which is which is very exciting. Yes. I don't know if you can elaborate on some of those yes. new concepts. Uh, St. Petersburg is going to be a very important uh, delivery for us. Uh, first of all, because we be, I believe personally it's going to be a major breakthrough in the Russian travel retail market. You know, the market is pretty fragmented, there's many operators in a number of different terminals. A 2,000 square meter walkthrough show will give us a chance to deliver something unique uh, to the Russian retail market. Plus, we've been working hard, as you know, on uh, improving, uh, improving and improving our shopping experience. And, and the new shop is going to include a number of additional novelties in our uh, duty-free store format uh, that include special services for niche market like Connoisseur's Lounge where you can buy very expensive and have a proper education experience on very expensive mm -hmm. liquor. Uh, luxury fragrances we just launched in uh, Antalya and uh, in, we're planning the launch in other markets. We think there is a very strong uh, opportunity for niche consumer to be treated properly and, and, and also for certain brands that have not been historically present in travel retail mm -hmm. uh, to test this channel. There's also a number of other novelties you will see in the PNC, uh, in the PNC department that I cannot talk uh, mm -hmm. at the moment, uh, but it's going to be extremely exciting. The approach we did take uh, in terms of uh, category will be um, manifesting itself in the, in the shop design and in the way we, we have, uh, we will lend the, the shopping experience. So we're pretty excited to see this new shop. Just how risky do you think these new novelties and concepts are going to be for you guys? Because there is a general criticism of the, in of the industry that uh, buyers and retailers tend to be uh, on the side of caution and choose international brands. Do you consider this to be quite, quite risky almost? Look, the, the risk has is embedded in our, uh, in our industry. I mean, the highest risk is definitely not trying uh, new lines of product in the shop. It's more the contact side of our business. Um, 
we, we live in, a, in an environment, we operate in an environment that by definition has a high degree of uh, rigidity. Uh, because, as you know, mainstream brands are very important to us. We need to do them uh, properly. The typical duty-free shop is a, is a shop where you have a lot of spaces that are rigidly allocated to brands, which is, you know, what also consumers want. M many of the consumers look for a given brand. Our challenge is to make sure we also introduce the capability to have flexible space in the store because there is a degree of growth that, cram, that comes from uh, uh, innovation and, 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 and trial and error process. So it's not a big risk. We have to take the risk. And the way you take the risk is even in, uh, you have even to look at the design approach of mm -hmm. the shop to allow for that flexibility to come to market. Mm -hmm. And just how much in terms of shop design uh, does the flow of passenger traffic do you have to take that into account because some airports have looked at this and decided that retail is actually obstructing the, walk, the walkways and so have either cut back or rethought this. You know, yes. That's obviously part of your thought process as well. Yes. Um, there's been a lot of talking about the walk-through uh, concept. I'm not, and probably I'm a little bit controversial here, I'm not an advocate of walkthroughs. I think walkthrough is a it's been a very good solution when airports still uh, process passenger in a highly fragmented uh, manner. So the typical airport would have had uh, three uh, different security screens in three different areas of the terminal. So the walkthrough idea did bring improvement in the industry because if anything it allowed uh, to capture 100% of footfall mm -hmm. and uh, it allowed to have a strong visibility of the retail offer, particularly for the core categories that still account for 40-50% of total airports allowed. Mm -hmm. Now there is one part though that we need to take into account into developing the new store uh, in, in the future, that footfall is important, visibility of retail offer is important, but still Penetration in core categories in mature market is between 20 and 25 percent. Mm -hmm. That basically means that you have like three passengers out of, uh, e and even less actually, sometimes it's 12 percent. Mm -hmm. you, you have between uh, one uh, in four and one in eight, no, eight, four to one or eight to one passengers mm -hmm. who do not buy. So. The model I think is best, is, is one of those uh, situations where you have uh, a consolidation of, uh, of flows, mm -hmm. a large uh, walk-by store close to the entrance in the terminal. I think a very good example would be Antalya T2, mm -hmm. very open front, a great visibility of all your offer, all your categories, a lot of attractive points in the shop, which definitely gives you the full capability to attract those who at least want to wander and enter the shop. We know normally one in two still enter the shop and don't buy, mm -hmm. but those that really cannot be bothered with entering the shop are not going to create a problem to those who really are mm -hmm. there to buy. Of course. And my last question is, is twofold. Um, how significant is the can show for you? I know it's the, the biggest really of, of, of the year, but yeah. you know, and, and what are your goals? You know, what are your fixed goals for the week? Yes. Well, this very year we had a number of goals. The normal, the business to business uh, maintenance, so to speak, and uh, in that part, can plays a very important role. And we are in a, in a relationship industry. Mm -hmm. We connect brands to consumer and having a chance, and we all travel a lot, by the way, so having a chance to have all our largest partners under one roof is, is a very good mm -hmm. opportunity. We internally as well had also some other initiatives, exciting initiatives this year, we're launching this global organization, global interaction with certain uh, uh, brand partners, so it's been quite uh, hectic so far. Mm -hmm. In fact, we came even a week before. Okay, right, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yes, I think, I think there's more companies that are, are doing that now because it just seems that the week just isn't quite long enough yes. for uh, enough business meetings to yes. happen. So. Yes. And I mentioned to you before that some exhibitors um, are put out the new ones because they feel that um, buyers are here just to have meetings with their existing partners and perhaps are too busy or there's been the uh, criticism of being too lazy that they aren't looking 
for anything that's new or looking to invest in new brands? How would you respond You're to that? You're absolutely right. Uh, I think uh, we don't do enough when we're here uh, in terms of capturing the opportunity to scout uh, what's new because the agenda fills up very quickly and you end up being uh, pressed with priorities. Uh, we, we are now looking at some uh, space carved out to go and look at what we don't know, uh, but it's not enough, I agree with you. We should do more probably even from an organizational viewpoint when we plan uh, the attendance uh, of these meetings and fair. Lots of people will uh, accept that um, and uh, with open arms, I think that, uh, yeah. that not, not an apology, but uh, Perhaps the no, reason it's, why. Yeah, it's taking stock of where we are. And again, we do already send uh, uh, some of our uh, leading buyers to, to scout. But if I'm honest, there's not enough time allocated to that. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe next year that's something that everyone can look to improve on, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you for sparing your time in a very busy schedule, as we've, as we've just discussed. Um, and I hope the year continues to be as fruitful as it has been so far. Thank you so much. Thank you.